Welcome back. So for this one, we're going to focus on the grammar, the morphosyntactic development that happens with first language acquisition, looking at different stages of acquisition um, and how they happen during the course of our young lives. So when we're thinking about morphosyntactic development, um, this is looking at all of the different aspects of language that we acquire in a very short time span. So we'll focus in this lecture on morphology, lexicon, and syntax, so the more grammatical and vocabulary aspects of development. And then the next lecture, we'll be focusing um, on some of the sounds and other aspects. So when we're thinking about these different stages of acquisition, we're starting um, at a very young age when we start acquiring language, and there's a lot of different stages that we undergo. The first stage where we actually start acquiring some aspects of language is actually even before we're born. The prenatal stage is one where certain aspects of language is already starting to be imparted in us. Um, and then we have different stages around the first six months, around the next six months, and a lot of these stages do overlap with each other. They're not always given in specific times, and you'll notice that the time frames that are given are somewhat fluid. Um, so not everyone is expected to fit into these specific times, but they're sort of generalized time frames that most people would be expected to go through around those times based on all of those different types of uh, experiments and types of different studies that have been done over the years looking at how languages are acquired. So we start at the prenatal stage before birth, and then in the first six months we have a few particular aspects, including things like proto-conversations, um, the next six months to a year, we have things like babbling. We start segmenting words apart from each other. And then we get into the one word stage where we're actually starting to acquire vocabulary. Our first 50 words happen around this point. We move into a word plus gesture stage where we start gaining vocabulary very quickly. And this allows us to start putting words together into a two word stage. And then finally, we have a long lasting telegraphic stage that sort of eases us into full development and full acquisition. And you'll notice that a lot of these numbers that are listed have a semicolon with them. And this is just to indicate the first number is the year and the second number is the month. So since this is since there are 12 months in a year, it's not a decimal system. They use the semicolon to represent year and then month when you're looking at those. So if you see numbers like that, that's what that means. So if we start at the prenatal stage, by the time someone is in the third trimester of pregnancy, a fetus has sufficiently developed brain and ears. They're able to start hearing their mother's voice. And so even though they can't hear individual phonemes through the embryonic fluid, they can start to hear things like prosody and intonation. And this is something you typically would only expect for the mother's voice themselves because that's traveling through their body um, and able to be heard through that fluid. And so some of the t studies have shown that newborn infants can recognize their mother's voice distinctly from other voices once they're born. So they'll react differently when they hear their mother's voice because it's something that's already familiar to them. They'll also mimic the prosody of their mother tongue in their crying when they're first born. So the way that we tend to um, align our words, the kinds of prosody and intonational patterns that we use, will be matched in their crying prosody when they're first born because of what they've already heard while they were in the womb. And they'll also react differently to people speaking their mother tongue than to people speaking other languages. So they'll notice, they'll turn, they'll react to languages that they've heard already and those different kinds of intonation patterns differently than if they're hearing something that isn't familiar to them. And they'll also be able to even recognize the prosody of a story that's read to them in the womb. So if you're reading the same story over and over again, they'll recognize that as distinct also. So this is different than you know putting headphones over your stomach and trying to play classical music. That doesn't really do much. But if you're actually reading out loud while pregnant, those kinds of prosody, those kinds of intonation have been shown to actually affect what is recognized once someone is born. And then once we do actually get into that birth and first six month period, we, the babies will start to actually test out aspects of linguistic use themselves. So they'll start testing out their vocal tract and lungs. Things just like screaming, crying, cooing, just any sort of noise making is already testing out their lung capacity. It's testing out their vocal tract in different ways. And by the time that an infant is between two and six months is when their vision develops and they really start being able to look into people's eyes. They can follow eye gaze. They can establish joint attention. If you've ever been around a brand new newborn, they can't really look at you. They don't really look anywhere that is kind of all over the place 
but by the time they're a few months old, they're able to start actually recognizing that you're looking at them and look back. They can start following where you're looking and see and follow along with that. And then around four months or so is when babies really start to smile, to laugh, and to start becoming interested in social interactions. So this is one of the first things that really starts to develop is our social interaction with other humans. So during this time period, even at a very young age, we're already starting to engage in what we call proto-conversations. So these kinds of proto-conversations are things that aren't really a conversation at all but follow the same kinds of rules of turn-taking, same kind of rules of how adult conversations take place. So from language to language, we all have slightly different expectations of how much overlap is expected, how much interruption is expected, what is okay, what isn't okay. <clears throat> and babies are already starting to learn those things through these proto-conversations at a very young age. So th they might smile or laugh or babble or scream as a turn that counts for them. And then an adult might respond and say, oh, yes, and then say something back. The baby will then react, and then you might continue something. So you're kind of having what seems like a conversation, what feels like a conversation. And they're learning the basic rules of discourse of their culture, even at a very, very young age. So there are several videos that are uh, accompanying this lecture, but because of copyright issues, I can't actually post them directly in. So there's a separate one that I have that's an unlisted video that I will link to um, in the description, and it'll also be on Blackboard for you, and you can actually watch the video. But the first one is this one here. This one is a very well-known video um, of two twins that are having a conversation with each other. So what I'd like you to do is to go into the accompanying YouTube video that has the different videos attached. This one is video one in that video. Um, listen to it and then think about the features that I'll describe in a moment. So in this video, the elements that you might see is that you'll notice that the intonation that they're using sounds a lot like language. It sounds like they're actually speaking a language, even though the noises they're making aren't actual words, aren't actual language. You can notice that there's already turn taking. They recognize when someone is stopping and the, the other person is starting and they are going back and forth in that. And you can see this laughter and this engagement between the twins as they're having what looks like a conversation. And so you can also pay attention. They're already aware of these extra linguistic features, things like hand waving and additional things that are part of the conversation. So if you're just hearing this as the sounds, it looks, it sounds like an adult-like conversation, even though they're not actually using any particular words yet. They're not actually conveying anything in particular, but they are interacting as though it's having a full conversation. Once you move into this proto-conversation stage, um, and often along alongside this stage as well, is when you're also starting to add these other elements of language production. So around six to eight months is when babies will begin to babble and start actually testing out their motor control. They're moving their lips, they're moving their tongue, they're moving their velum and their glottis to produce these different variety of consonants and vowels. And they'll start with just a few at first and then they'll start expanding them as they're able to start up gain control over some of these sounds over time. So some of them may favor one place of articulation over another. So many babies start out by producing mostly just labials and not alveolars or preferring alveolars and not making that many labial sounds. And cross-linguistically, this is what we saw in historical linguistics. This is part of why the word for mother is often some sort of variant on ma, because the nasal sounds and these low back vowels are often the first sounds that start being tested out in this babbling. It's really easy to just open your mouth and say ah, and the ma 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 sounds is just moving your lips, opening and closing them. And these tend to be some of the first sounds that most infants will make. And these sounds are also found in almost all languages around the world. So cross-linguistically, this becomes a word for mother just because they tend to be the first sounds that babies are producing and are able to test and to start mastering. As they're babbling, they're also going to start using these same things that are also very common in the language they're, they're acquiring. So the more common sounds in the language, the more likely they are to be able to use them at an earlier stage. They're hearing them the most frequently, they're gonna be practicing them the most frequently. Um, and so at this point, when they're very young, <clears throat> babies can actually still hear and distinguish very subtle differences between different sounds, between different possible phonemes in the world. But by around the age of one or so, they've sort of lost that ability and they, they're starting to think in terms of phonology, in terms of phonemes and allophones, where a group of sounds that might be 
technically different, but are perceived as the same in a language, they're also going to start only perceiving that group of sounds as that individual sound in that language. So they start to lose that distinction between all those different possible phonemes by around the age of one, and they start focusing in on the sound system of the language or the languages that they're actually acquiring at this stage. So there's another video that you can see that's just, just a short one exhi exhibiting some of these babbling features. This is video two in the accompanying video. Um, so when you're looking through this video, some of the elements that you might notice are that there are lots of repeated syllables. There's a continuous flow of speech. There's a lot of intonational patterns that you're starting to see develop around this time. Um, the, the child that's in this video is about seven months or so, so just starting out some of those babbling features. You'll notice there's a lot of ah sounds with just a few different consonants, a few different vowels, so still in the relatively early stages of this aspect of babbling where they're really starting to test out things a little bit, but they're not quite able to do too much. And you can see some other motor control things happening where they're sort of feeling their hand and looking at that. They're sort of noticing that they're moving their mouths in certain ways. So they don't have mastery of it all yet, but they're starting to test out these different aspects of their motor control. And then around the same time that babbling really starts to take off is when they're going to start being able to segment the speech stream that they're hearing. So when we're speaking as adult speakers, we don't pause between words in normal speech. We say things one right after the other, but we're still able to hear the, where the word ends, where the word begins. We're able to parse all of those things into individual words as we're listening to speech happen. Babies will start to do this by around the time they're a year old or so. They'll start to find some of those statistical regularities in that continuous sound wave, some commonalities of things that happen. And it's argued that child-directed speech really helps with this because we tend to emphasize lexical nouns and verbs and downplay grammatical things. We tend to pause between words so they can hear where a word ends and another one begins. We tend to speak slower. We tend to repeat things. So they're able to start parsing and finding those patterns better through the process of this child-directed speech. And then once they've started to be able to segment those different speech um, pieces is when they'll actually get into this one word stage. So they've practiced their motor skills, they figured out these word boundaries, and then they can actually start producing words. And this usually happens for most children somewhere around 10 months to a year and two months where they'll say their first word. And this is distinct from babbling because this is where we now have a pairing of sound and meaning. They're not just testing out their motor control anymore. They now recognize that something that they're saying actually has a meaning associated with it. So when you're just hearing babbling such as da 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 or ma ma ma, this isn't actually a child's first word unless they actually know its reference. So a lot of times you may hear them say something like ma ma, but that's not necessarily in reference to their mother if they don't realize that there's a meaning associated that, that's associated with that. So sometimes you may get super excited and think that they're saying their first word, and it may or may not actually be their first word just yet until they start recognizing that, con that connection between the sounds they're saying and what they're referring to. But very quickly, this goes from a first word into the first 50 words or so. So by about a year and a half, toddlers can produce usually about 50 words. These tend to be very common household nouns or things that you hear very frequently. So things like people, mama, papa, pets, whether it's just a type of pet or a pet's name, very common foods, very common toys, the kinds of clothes they might be engaging with, sim similar routines like bye-bye and night-night, things that they have a lot of repetition for. And at this stage, as they're starting to speak some words a little bit, comprehension is usually very far ahead of their production. So even though they may only be able to speak about 50 words or so, they're starting to understand several hundred words. So you can speak to a young toddler and say things and they'll understand what you're saying, but maybe don't have the vocabulary yet to respond in full. So they might only have a single word and they might only have some sort of gesture or some sort of point or some sort of um, transitionary thing because they don't quite have the vocabulary yet. So to show this one word stage, um, there is video three in your accompanying video um, that gives a really good illustration of this. And so some of the features that show this in the video is that you can tell through the way this conversation is taking place the comprehension is way above the production so they're understanding their mother's questions they're understanding the things that are being asked but their responses are nearly always just a single word they're responding to those questions and commands 
even if they can't answer every single one. So they might be pointing to something instead of actually saying something if they don't have that um, answer yet. And the answers are almost always one word. And the few exceptions um, that we hear in this are usually things that are more like a fixed phrase that is sort of learned as a unit rather than as individual words. But at this time, there's also a very quick transition into this sort of word and gesture stage. So within the same amount of time or so around a year and a half, you're already starting to add gestures to the words that you're saying. And this is a very important prerequisite to the two word stage and to the beginnings of syntax. So while this starts to happen around the same time as those first 50 words are being acquired, it's something that's also showing that they're able to then think about ways to put concepts together. So they're starting to get that basics of syntax, even if they can't actually create complex statements yet. So instead of saying something like want cookie, they might make a reaching or a grabbing gesture and just say cookie, or they might point at a cookie and say want, because they have some of the words, but they don't quite have all of them together. But they're starting to show that they're able to put those concepts together until they actually start gaining the vocabulary to put those words together themselves. And so it's around this time that the word and gesture stage is taking off, the vocabulary spurt also begins. So this usually happens around a year and a half to two years old is when they start beginning to really gain vocabulary very, very quickly. And during this spurt, children are learning about five to 10 new words every day until they're about five. That's a huge amount of new words to gain every day. Um, and if you see some of the numbers from the different ages, you can see how quickly this is in comparison to how we gain words throughout the rest of our life. So by around age five, most children know about 5,000 words or so and are able to use them. By puberty, about eight to 10,000 words. So you can see that they're gaining way more words in that first couple of years than the amount of words you start gaining after that period of time. And then by high school graduation, young adults tend to know about 15 or 20,000. College graduates know about 20 to 30,000. So even though we have like a million plus words in English, you're only really actively using a, a small amount of those in our everyday lives. Um, and you're really only familiar with a small percentage of them. So, but you can see how much slower it is to gain those words through most of life compared with that period of time from around two to five, where you're gaining thousands of words over a very short period of time. And as this vocabulary spurt starts, keep in mind this is something that extends through the rest of these stages and overlaps with these stages as we're gaining more and more complexity of our language. The two word stage will begin once you have enough vocabulary to start putting things together. And it tends to happen that these two word utterances follow a pretty basic template, something like more X or I want X or X gone. So it can be things like possession, doggy ball, where the doggy has the ball or a location where they're pointing and saying book there. Um, very basic questions like where mommy, where you're not getting a full syntax yet, but they're starting to put those things together and they tend to be look, to look similar to these very simple clauses where you have a verb and an object or a subject and a verb, but not quite all of them together yet. So something like go park or want cookie or mommy read or baby fall, where you're starting to put things together into things that have a broader meaning to, as a whole, but not quite quite as complex as what you would expect in adult speech. So once this happens, you can start seeing a transition into this final stage we have, which is known as the telegraphic stage. As they start moving past this two word stage, they've started to master putting a couple of words together into these thoughts. They're then going to be able to acquire aspects of morphology and more full kinds of syntax. So you can start getting things like daddy tie shoe or I want cookie please. And we call this a telegraphic stage because it sort of mimics the way that telegraph uh, messages were sent, where they tended to omit function words, they tended to omit things. If you're paying by the letter or paying by the word, you want to get your point across as quickly as possible and as few words as possible. And this is similar to how it sounds when toddlers are starting to do this. So when you're seeing this more complex syntax, this is something that increases in complexity slowly over time. So at the beginning, you might not have any function words or any morphology. And then slowly as you move through, you might start noticing some function words here and there, but not consistently, some morphology here and there, but not consistently. And then you notice that as they start recognizing the patterns of where to use them, how to use them, they will start to use them more and more consistently until over time they're able to use them with adult-like capacity. So from the same study that the WUGS research came from, four to five-year-olds tend to use the correct plural 
around 76% of the time, so they're starting to use it pretty frequently. But by the time they're six, they're using it about 97% of the time, which is the same as adult-like capacity. We still make mistakes sometimes. We don't always say everything exactly perfectly. So that's within the same kind of frame that you would expect adults to be able to do. Same with things like the progressive, the ING marker, um, the past tense, um, nearly adult-like capacity by about that same time. So some of these take a little bit longer than others to master, but you can see that it's slowly increasing over a period of time. And a really good video that shows this is in video four in the accompanying YouTube video. So I encourage you to watch this um, and follow along with some of the features that you notice here. And some of the important ones to pay attention to, so this is Henry. Um, Henry's speech is illustrated by showing lots of multi-word responses. There are some times where you hear some morphology and some function words, but they're not consistently used. There are times where you'd expect them, but you don't quite see them yet. But you are starting to see them develop where they are occasionally there where they need to be, but it's not consistent. It's not a common pattern that's every single time fully mastered yet. So that gives us the grammatical stages. For the last lecture that we'll look at, we'll talk about some of the sound patterns that also go along with these different stages. Again, questions, email me, schedule office hours, um, and then we'll be able to talk about these things in class as well.